What's up, everybody? This is Zach with Nerd K Plus for March the 22nd, 2018. Had a brain fart right there. Hope that you're enjoying your day. We're going to catch, catch you in on all the news that's been happening the last two days. If you haven't already, go ahead, go subscribe over to our YouTube channel, our Twitch channel, our Facebook page, our podcast, our this, our that. We've got a ton of awesome stuff, and we'll talk about our sponsor, which is patreon.com slash nerdcave, a little bit later in the show. But let's jump into what is and what forever will be the news. Rumor has it. It's a good Adele song if you've never heard it. Modern Warfare 2 Remaster is coming, but without the multiplayer. According to a source speaking to Charlie Intel, a Modern Warfare 2 Remaster is indeed in the works, though not at Raven, the studio that handled the original Modern Warfare Remaster. But the bigger news is that the new version allegedly has no multiplayer mode. It would just include the single-player campaign. For the many fans of Modern Warfare 2's online mode, that could be a major factor in whether or not the, this remaster, if it's officially confirmed, is worth picking up. I know one big thing that uh, the last Modern Warfare remaster, uh, they put multiplayer in there and it sold very, very well. <laughs> they even resold all the DLC and everything. So I'm curious to see why they're, why they wouldn't put multiplayer in there unless they're going to shell that out as a totally different game as well. Uh, and I could see them doing that because it is Activision and they love your money and they love just ringing out every penny that you have in your account. So, um, I love the Modern Warfare series as a whole. I haven't played the remaster and everything because I don't want to give them any more of my money. But I really loved that series because of the storytelling aspect that it had in there. And it was just... I remember the, that moment being in the ghillie suit and everything and the the people were walking by you and all of that. Like It was such a great, great game, uh, like series of games and everything. Modern Warfare 3 kind of lost me. Modern Warfare 4... Eh. It just kind of went after that. First two are good, uh, but not having multiplayer, that's very, very curious. And I am wondering if they're not wanting to pull people away from what is uh, Mar uh, Call of Duty World War II uh, because their microtransactions are so steeped into that game. And that's where they're built. They're pulling a lot of their money right now is from those microtransactions in the current Call of Duty title. And then we have Black Ops 4 coming out later this year. So I think they don't want to splinter too many people um, playing different games and having to have servers for each one of those. So I could see why they're doing that, um, but it's going to definitely hamper the amount of games that are sold because a lot of people really love the multiplayer from the older Call of Duty games. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you buy Modern Warfare 2 Remastered without the multiplayer? Or does do you have to have the multiplayer? Let me know down in the comments. Ark Survival Evolved is coming to a little console called the Switch in 2018. Today, during the State of Unreal Showcase, developer Studio Wildcard confirmed what many have speculated from, from time now, for some time now, that his Dino Pack survival game is coming to the Nintendo Switch in 2018. Taking the stage, art director Jesse Rapzik, uh, lead designer Jeremy Stiggs, Steve Litz showed off both the newly announced Switch version as well as a mobile phone version. This past November, Rabzik spoke potential of getting Ark post uh, ported to the Switch. He said, "I think the Switch is a great platform for a game like Ark because it's a game it's designed right. You can right, you can kind of pull off, sorry, pull out and do some stuff." Uh, it's kind of like how players play it almost like you might play a mobile game. You know, you might want to do something in the game for a few minutes, like tend to your dinos or your crops or something. If you play Ark that way, the mobility of the switch platform might be appealing to those players because they can just kind of carry it with them. Um, I'm glad that Ark is coming to switch. I know it has been on steam and then it came to Xbox and it came to PlayStation four and it was such a big, big thing. Now having it portable is definitely going to get more people attaching to it. The, the amount of games that are selling that are indie titles on the switch is absolutely ridiculous. Blossoms tell this is a game that's pretty much Zelda in a way. Um, 
the studio was actually fixing to tank because of the poor sales on Steam. Once they ported over to Switch, the sales on Switch made it so that the studio did not close. That says a lot of the power of people that owning Switch. They're buying games because they want to play. I know Nick Caputo, he messaged me earlier. He actually got Oxen Free on a Switch, uh, I think, the last few days, and he's loving it. So people are buying other games than the first-party games, and the first-party games are selling extremely well. So I, I'm excited to see another game, a big game, that's an indie title coming to the Nintendo Switch. Now, Derek Daniel has a question. He said, with Ark Survival Evolve coming to the Switch later this year, though you can play it by yourself, but nonetheless, it's a heavily online-centric game, does this further submit other online games can come to the Switch like Overwatch or maybe even a game like Fortnite? Um, I think with september being the launch of nintendo's actually paid service i think we're going to see a lot of games that are going to be very heavy on the multiplayer side um could we see stuff like overwatch i totally think so I, i'm curious to see because <clears throat> i know we have lower end pcs and everything that's running overwatch running fortnite and everything so i'm curious to see if they would do that i think it would be uh, just another great way to sell more copies of Overwatch and to put, we've already got Fortnite now on mobile platforms, so I don't see why we wouldn't get it on the Switch next. Uh, I think it would be an awesome thing uh, to have on there. I think, you know, being able to bring your Switch around and actually get a console like version of it with, you know, like controls and all of that. And I know playing on your mobile is very different compared to playing with, you know, like a tr controller and everything. So I can definitely see it happening. I'm curious to see if these third parties push it. I know Epic is putting Fortnite on everything. You'll get it on a toaster uh, next and you'll get, you know, we've already got Skyrim on there. So, you know, the roach that will never die is already on the system. So I'm curious to see it as well. I think September, we're going to see a lot of these online games crop up like crazy right now. We've got the free version of it. I hope Nintendo is building some serious infrastructure with their online service because I know with Mario Kart, it has been awful trying to get tournaments going and everything. So I'm curious to see what they do with the paid version because the free version is kind of like having another hole in your head right now. It's, it's not that good of an idea. Um, but moving on to something that excited me today, some CD Projekt Red news. CD's Project talks microtransactions, multiplayer, and more in Cyberpunk 2077. At a financial presentation for 2017 results, CD Projekt Red talked a little bit about Cyberpunk 2077, including the possibility of multiplayer coming after launch. During the event, the studio mentioned that the game utilizes a class-based character structure, uh, will not have microtransactions, That's me clapping because a studio actually has decided not to put microtransactions in their game. Good job, CD Projekt Red. I'm proud of you. And I'm going to buy Cyberpunk 2077 just because of that. Not because I was going to buy it anyway, but now I'm definitely going to buy it because there's no microtransactions. I applaud you. I did it on the show. And that while the game was focused on single player, President and Joint CEO, CEO Adam Kishnitz, I don't know how to say his name. Kishnitsky <laughs> said that further extensions of the game like multiplayer could be added later. We already said that in the past, that the past, that in the past, that we wanted our future projects to integrate online components at some point in the future. When asked about a battle Royale mode for the game, uh, Adam said that everything was being considered. In terms of platforms, a question from the presentation's Q&A portion mentioned previous statements that the company that Cyberpunk 2077 would span multiple platform generations. Adam said that while the next generation of home consoles hasn't been announced yet, the game is very advanced and that it's ready to interface with future generations. A question also was asked about the Switch. But Adam said it was nothing. There was nothing planned for it. Um, so if they're planning for something that is definitely 
you know, like PlayStation 5, Xbox 2, or whatever they're going to call it, um, it's definitely not going to run on the Switch. Uh, it's hard to make games that have run on the other consoles run on it right now, and with another generation, it's definitely going to make that very hard. Um, in them adding multiplayer later down the road, I'm fine with that. Uh, that way, they're focused on the main game, which is the story, and then add multiplayer later, do something interesting with it. By that point in time, I think when it releases, I think the Battle Royale craze will be done, uh, but I can definitely... Excuse me. I can definitely see that it it would probably crop up in the game. Not having microtransactions. I think that is awesome. I think everything that you need in the game should already be in the game. And if you listen to this show enough, you definitely know my feelings on microtransactions. So I'm glad that a major third-party developer, they created the Witcher series, everybody. If you don't know that, that's who CD Projekt Red is. They are standing up and they're saying, we value art, we value story playing, we value the gamer to not put microtransactions in there. Not even loot boxes. You know, like everybody's like, oh, well, there's not loot boxes, but you can buy what you want now. I don't want any of it. I want it in my game. Put it in my game. Now, if it's DLC, I'll, I'll accept DLC. DLC has been around long enough where I can accept it, and it just is what it is. Even season passes, I... I I don't accept them completely because everything has a season pass. But you look at The Witcher 3, there was so much free content that was put out in that game because CD Projekt Red loves making games. They're not in it. They're, they're, they're from Poland. So it they definitely have a different view on what gaming is, which I love. So good job, CD Projekt Red. I'm very, very proud of you. If I could hug you, I totally would. Now, another another group of people I would hug because this makes me very, very happy. Nintendo is looking to make games easier to find on the Switch eShop. Thank the good Lord. It is so hard to find a game on the Nintendo eShop right now for the Switch that it, it's like shooting yourself in the foot and hoping that eventually the bleeding would stop. <laughs> it's that bad. Nintendo has revealed it is looking to make games easier to discover on its digital eShop. The publisher revealed the news during a press briefing at GDC 2018 in San Francisco. According to Eurogamer, publisher relationship manager Damon Baker noted that Nintendo is listening and acting on feedback from the fans about the eShop. He said, I can assure you steps are being taken over the current the course of the year to improve the functionality in terms of discoverability and visibility to highlight all the great content. Further, it was revealed that Nintendo's digital sales are actually leapfrogging physical purchases in North America, putting them in the same wheelhouse as other digital publishers. We're setting a very similar course to the likes of EA, Activision, Ubisoft, Take Two. All of those guys are 50 to 60 of their total revenue is digital. Now, that comment right there is a little skewed because majority of those companies that he lists right there that revenue is based off of microtransactions they're based off of in-game purchases not the purchases of games like the actual purchases of that uh take two majority of their uh actually over half of their revenue this past year was based off of in-game purchases so them saying that a little skewed so i just wanted to put that out there I love that digital is becoming the way. I love downloading digital games on all of my consoles. I pretty much went totally digital unless I do like a Gamefly thing. Um, but it's it's definitely the way of the future now. Not saying that physical media is going out anytime. There's a lot of people that still don't have great internet. The infrastructure in America is not the greatest. Uh, people still have bad internet and can't download stuff or it takes them forever to do it. So I don't think physical is going to go anywhere soon. I think within the next 20 years, yes, we will get away from physical games necessarily. Uh, and you could definitely see it in the way if you walk into a GameStop right now, majority of that store is not games it is actually merchandise like it's like collectible stuff so you can definitely see that these you look at 
Best Buy, you look at Walmart, they don't make a ton of money off of their game sales. You know, it's just a portion of it. And you just, just look in the bigger picture and everything. I love that they're going to fix that. Uh, one of the biggest things, biggest problems with Steam is that the visibility of new games, new good games is a per big, big problem. And Switch, every Thursday, I go down the list, there's a ton of games that release on Switch every Thursday. And I hope we don't get to the point where people are missing the good games that are coming out on Switch. Not the first parties. You're going to see the first parties. They control that. But you don't. You won't see those indie darlings. And I'm very, very curious to see how they curate that, if they keep up. You know, they've had a few games that weren't great on the Nintendo eShop already put on there. So I'm hoping that they curate a little bit more so those really good games can shine through. Uh, but I love that they're going to fix the eShop because it is garbage. Just garbage. If you're not like a new game, an upcoming game, or a bestseller, or on sale, you're not going to be found right now. So I'm glad that they're going to fix that. Fortnite's Blitz mode updates makes building resources less abundant. Now, I played Fortnite before I got on here. Blitz mode, a ton of fun. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Resources gained from looting and farming were reduced with yesterday's hotfix. Having tons of resources is a blast, and our goal with this mode was to make it easier to gain resources due to the storm moving in so much faster. Having said with an announcement on Reddit, we believe that our initial resource numbers were a bit too abundant and are making this adjustment to ensure that there's still some risk reward when farming in Blitz. Uh, yeah, it's you still definitely are getting a lot more compared to uh, the regular battle Royale mode where it's not blitz, you know, just going into the slower mode, whatever you want to call it, the normal mode. Uh, it's definitely a lot more cause I was playing, I went back and forth and you, you farm much, much quicker, but, uh, I didn't play it before they did the hot fix. Uh, so I'm curious to see how much you were getting because it's almost ridiculous how much you're getting now, but it's definitely, and I let's go ahead and say this. I got in the top. I, I got all the way down to, Number four in the match before I did this one. But I'll tell you more about that because I got a little bit more Fortnite news. Fortnite's revenue in February has eclipsed PUBG's. Last month, Fortnite's revenue topped that of its Battle Royale rival, PUBG, earning $126 million. An impressive feat considering that it's a free-to-play game and all that money came from in-app purchases. So you can totally get this game for free. And it's already topped. Uh, I talked about it on Tuesday. It's already the second most grossing game on the iOS store. That's crazy. That's crazy. By comparison, PUBG has brought in $103 million, with most of that being attributed to the one-off purchases of the game itself, uh, reports The Verge. Now, that's awesome uh, for both companies. Uh, they've, they've done an awesome job. Uh, me and Derek played PUBG the other night because uh, City of Thieves was not working. Um, but Fortnite is definitely doing something right because it has topped PUBG in money. It's topped PUBG in views on Twitch and the people that are showing that on Twitch. The amount of people that are playing Fortnite has almost doubled um, over what has been PUBG and PUBG seems to be continually slipping, uh, what's going on. And I think I, I misspoke there. They're not doubling what PUBG, who, how many people PUBG are playing. They're doubling how many people are watching Fortnite on Twitch, doubling that. Um, I, I'm, I'm excited to see what PUBG is going to do. There's competition in this market. Competition breeds innovation. That's what I love about video games is because a lot of people come in and be like, okay, we're going to make a battle Royale game. You see everybody. We talked about CD project red might do that with cyberpunk 2077, uh, Activision with call of duty is looking into that. Everybody's got that. These two are the Kings right now. Fortnite's on top right now, but you look at PUBG, they are the third, I want to say most selling game on steam. That's crazy. That is absolutely crazy. So I'm curious to see what the competition is going to do with this kind of information because Tencent, which is one of the people that owns PUBG Corp has a lot of money, has a lot of money and 
They own a part of Ubisoft now. Game developer unionization talks stirs amidst IGDA concerns. At the Game Developers Conference this year, a roundtable discussion on the subject of establishing unions within the gaming industry was held under a cloud of anticipation and anxiety. The discussion, which was held and moderated by International Game Developers Association President Jen McLean, involved a hundred or so developers in the room speaking their minds about the desires to unionize as a means to prevent poor working conditions. So. This, there's a lot to this, and we'll get to the back to the rest of the article. If you don't know what unions are, it's a it's pretty much workers getting together to protect themselves from bad or poor working conditions. Unions started up early uh, in the Industrial Revolution because a lot of bosses were taking advantage advantage of employees. Uh, so if you don't know what that is, now you know. Um, and if you don't know the poor working conditions of the game industry, uh, there's a thing called crunch. And when a game is about to launch, you know, within a certain window, it's about six months, uh, sometimes a little bit longer, sometimes a little bit shorter, where they are wanting the developers to put in more hours than is really human, human, humanly possible. There we go. Um, and it causes a lot of stress. It causes a lot of health issues. So those are the kind of the work things that are going on, uh, amongst other things. You can look at, uh, the situation that's going on with, um, Detroit become humans developer. There's a lot of issues going on there, uh, with, kind of moral things and everything, but that haven't been proven. Uh, so back to the article, the tone of the discussion was overall genial, but it was clear before too long that both sides disagreed on the fundamental issues with little common ground. Had a vote been held in the room right then, it is exceedingly likely that the game developer unions would have been formed today based on the air in the room. Developers planning and trying to unionize have much long, have a much longer battle ahead than one room. However, though, it seems almost inevitable at this point. Um, and if you look at all of the things that, um, they go through, they, these are very, very smart people. These are people that are making the things that we in love. That is a form of art and they're being pushed to the breaking point. There's a lot of people that are lead developers and everything. And after a big project, uh, we've seen it with, um, over at Naughty Dog, we've seen it at EA. We've seen, you look at uh, LA Noir, that studio was riddled with uh, problems during crunch time and everything. A lot of people just leave after that, or they take a sabbatical, or they never develop another game if it's bad enough. And if you do multiple of that, that's a lot on people. We saw recently that the people that did voice acting or mocap, they have like organized and they got um, new contracts and unionized and everything but we didn't see anything happen with the developers. So I think this is a point in time we're going to start seeing these people stand up for themselves, which I'm totally glad because they deserve to be treated like human beings. Uh, so there you go. There's all the news for this week, uh, except we've got game releases here in just a second. Before we do that, everybody, if you want to support us, you want to get awesome content early, you want to just be nice, and just give us a dollar. Mate Robbie Holler. You can go over to patreon.com slash nerdcave. It helps us run everything that we do here. Helps us these big bright lights keep the electricity on. It helps just everything that we do here. Uh, so go over to patreon.com slash nerdcave. Support us there. Help us out. And I'll be happy. I'll be I'll, I'll smile a little bit more. I'm just kidding. I smile all the time. Now, if you wanted to know where and when the newest games were going to come out you're in the right place today on march 22nd these are the games that are releasing and it's a bunch of switch so if i don't say any other platform just assume that it's switch okay arcade archives moon patrol arcade I archives neo geo world heroes 2 jet arc park for the ps vr rift or and vive Eat Beat Dead Spike, Son. That's on the Switch. We're back to Switch games here. Jakito Kentaro's Revenge, 
Manticore Galaxy on fire. No thing. Not nothing. No thing. Opus Rocket of Whispers. Slay away. Camp Butcher's Cut. Slaw, soul, soul Divide. Sword of Darkness. Those were all Switch games. That is for March 22nd. For tomorrow's game releases, March 23rd. That's Friday. we got some good stuff coming out. Castle of the Heart for the Switch. Detective Pikachu for the 3DS. I wish I had a 3DS or a 2DS again so I could play this game. It looks really, really fun. Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdoms for the PlayStation 4 and PC. Pokemon Tournament DX Battle Pack DLC Wave 2 for the Switch. Velocity 2 times Critical Mass Edition for the PlayStation 4. And the Vita! The Vita lives, everybody. A Way Out for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. And Western Press for the Xbox One. I'm excited for A Way Out. I know me and Derek have been talking uh, back and forth. Uh, we're planning on doing something with it. It might be a Let's Play. It might be a live stream or something. Uh, but we're planning on playing some of it uh, tomorrow. Uh, we'll figure that all of that, all those details out. But I'm really, really excited about it because it is a co-op game, and I love co-op games. I can remember all the way back, and I know it's not too far back, but the first Gears of War, that was where we really got down to the nitty-gritty of co-op, and I had a ton of fun of playing it. So I'm glad to be getting into another co-op game uh, that is very story-based and definitely not Gears of War by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm excited for it because that is going to be a ton of fun. So I told you earlier that I was playing Fortnite Battle Royale earlier, and I got all the way down to number four. I was eliminated at number four. Now, I only started playing Fortnite last uh, yesterday. I only started playing Fortnite yesterday. So I start the match previous to this. My controller and everything lags out and goes crazy. I get killed. I'm like number 89. I'm like, okay, whatever. So we get back, I get back to the load screen and the lobby and everything. And then I jump into another game. My controller is freaking out. Like I will press it forward. Nothing happens. And then my character moves forward. I'm like, okay, there's something wrong here. So I try to figure out what's going on with my controller. Can't figure it out. So the game starts. Can't back out of the game. I'm like, okay, well, we're going to figure this out. I see where the, the circle is, and I just drop in the middle of it. And I, I, like, crouched down on a hill, and I just waited. And I was working on the whole show and everything. I just waited. And the eye of the storm, I was playing Blitz. The eye of the storm just kept getting smaller and smaller. And there's a guy that ran right by me, didn't kill me. I was like, okay. And that was like at like 20, I want to say, was like left on the thing. So like the storm got a little smaller, smaller, and I had to move or the storm was going to get me. So I moved behind a tree and it kept getting smaller and smaller. I was down to six. I was like, all I want to do is get in the top five. That's all I want to do out of this match. I didn't kill anybody. I got all the way down to four. Uh, but I've really enjoyed playing Fortnite so far uh, because it is just so different. Um, and I, I've played PUBG and everything, and I, I, I enjoy the little bit that I've played of it. But I like the building aspect of Fortnite, and it runs Way better than PUBG, uh, in my opinion. It It's definitely got its own style and everything, but it definitely runs a lot better than PUBG. PUBG is kind of like a... It's like a, a polished turd, if you will. It's still a turd, and you might want to play with that turd, but it's still a turd because it, it just does not run the right way, in my opinion. Um, but I've enjoyed my little bit of time with it. Uh, I've also been playing Sea of Thieves. Um, there's been... A lot of praise for the game. There's been a lot of not praise for the game. So I'm curious to see uh, where all of that goes. I think me and Derek are actually going to be playing some Sea of Thieves tonight on the stream. Uh, so you can check that out. Uh, but the biggest thing that I've seen from that game is really hard to play when you're by yourself, especially sailing your, si your, your ship. There we go. Sailing your ship is extremely difficult. Uh, I sell a sloop. So I don't have that big galleon and everything. I don't have to deal with matchmaking and all of that. So uh, there's my two things that I've been playing. Let's jump into, real quick, uh, the few questions that we have in here. Dan Kennedy says, do you think we will have Kratos versus Thor in the new God of War game? Uh, I would definitely 
say that we're going to have Kratos versus Thor. Um, we're, I'm curious to see how deep we get into them fighting, uh, him fighting other gods and everything. I would love to see that happen. I think that would be awesome. And then we just kill Thor. And then I rub that in Robbie's face. And that would be, I would, every day of my life, I would send him the clip of me doing that to Thor, uh, just over and over again, over and over again until I break him. Uh, but that's just me. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nick says, question, I hear rumblings of state of Wisconsin actually considering banning Derek Daniel and part of his known espionage and fraud. Anyway, to confirm, I have no, I no, no, I cannot comment. I plead the fifth. I can't comment on that. Uh, but there you go, everybody. There is March 22nd episode of nerd K plus. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you had fun and got all the video game news that you need if you did, go ahead, hit that like button, share it with somebody that you want to keep informed, and then we'll have some fun in the comments below. This has been Zach. Have a week.